Hello Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Today we're going to talk about Roman culture again, and we're going to talk about meals and food for the Romans. Let's get to it. And before starting with the actual video, I'm pretty sure you must have noticed that I have indeed shaved my beard. Now why in the planet Earth have I done that? Well, on Monday I'm going to make another, or the second, interactive video in my channel. If you haven't checked out my other interactive video, Samurai vs. Raymond, please make sure to do so because it's really, really good fun. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Now, in, on Monday I'm going to make another video, but this time I'm going to be the Raymond soldier. And, and so, in order to, be, to try to be as historically accurate as possible, I had to shave. Ha! <laughs> now you look like a Roman. However, no problem, I'm Italian, just that I'll be Father Christmas in a fortnight. I know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, yes, you might be historically accurate as far as your face is concerned, but what about your hair? That does not look Roman, it looks barbaric. Yes, it does. However, or perhaps we should say angelic. Sorry for the pun. Are you suggesting I should cut my hair? Not a chance in heaven. <laughs> Don't worry, it's okay, I'll just tie it up and hide it under my helmet. Anyways, look forward for that video because it's going to be Roman, Imperial Roman Soldier versus Viking. Back on our topic now. Today we're going to talk about meals for the Romans. Now, the Romans had mainly three meals. We're going to examine all of these. We're going to see what they ate and, uh, and, and we will see some words in Latin as we always do. Of course, please keep in mind that when I use Latin in these videos, I use classical pronunciation, but occasionally I also put ecclesiastical pronunci pronunciation. When I don't specify, it's always going to be classical. All right then, without further ado, let's get to it. There were three meals in ancient Rome. We had jentaculum, which was breakfast, prandium, which would be modern day it's lunch, although it was different, and I will explain this in a minute, and then cena, or Koina, if you want to use classical pronunciation with detached diphthongs, which would be dinner. Let's examine all these in details. Now, Yentaculum, the first thing we have to say about Yentaculum is that it began with a glass of water. So this is something the Romans used to do. Now, as they would drink this glass of water, they would begin eating. Now, what was the Yentaculum made of? Well, we have quite a lot of possibilities, so let's examine all of these. Well, first of all, one very common possibility in, in the times of Rome was to eat the leftovers of dinner. So in which case, we would have bread, cheese, olives and honey. Another kind of breakfast was to dunk bread into sweetened wine. So this was another one, another way to have breakfast. And thirdly, was to eat bread with oil, vinegar and salt. Now, on about this very last one, I'd like to say that, for example, this is something that in modern-day Italy we still do. As a matter of fact, in my family, we eat bread with oil, vinegar and salt um, quite a lot. I know that we've been doing this as long as I can remember, so... Um, it's something that my mother used to do, my grandmother used to do, and, and, and we can go, f go on, I think, all the way down to the times of, of the Romans. So this is a tradition that we kept. And it's something that is very simple to make, so if you have never tried this and you want to eat like a Roman, then you should try this one out. Another typical kind of breakfast was bread and figs. Now, children ate differently. Normally they would just have breakfast or yentaculum with bread and milk. Prandium. Now, prandium is, is a bit of a tricky one because we need to say a couple of things first. Now, of course, the word prandium is where the word uh, Italian, modern Italian word pranzo comes from. Uh, although modern Italian day pranzo is different in a way because pranzo in Italy or lunch is the main meal. But for the Romans, prandium, basically a second breakfast, so to speak. It was eaten at midday, it was frugal, and it was normally eaten standing. Because you have to consider that at that time, most people were working in the city. They were not back home. So often they would simply buy something off from vendors and, and, and consume the a frugal lunch or prandium just before going back to work. During winter, they would eat hot food, and during summer, they would eat fresh food. A typical prandium consisted of bread, cold meat, fish, legumes, eggs, fruit, and wine. Sometimes, instead of just simply drinking wine, they would drink mulsum, which was a drink made of wine mixed with honey. So the main meal for the Romans was the cena. Now, 
this meal here would normally start around three or four in the afternoon and it could go on until the next morning, depending, of course, on the social status of the pe people we are talking about. Now, in early Roman times, so we're talking about Republican times, they, they would eat just a, a soup of legumes, milk, cheese, fresh fruit, and dry fruit as well, and lard. Because please consider that lard was an important component of Roman diet. And as a matter of fact, lard was also eaten by legionaries uh, quite a lot. But with the late Republic and Imperial times, bread and meat start to become uh, more common even in the lower classes. If they had guests, they would have them over for dinner. And the meal was not called chen anymore, it was called convivium or convivium in classical pronunciation. Having gustum or starters, caput cene, which were the main courses, and mensa secunda, which was the dessert. Now, in the case of patricians or uh, no Roman nobility, these meals would be directed by the so-called archimagirus or archimagirus, which was basically a chef, and all the guests would be wearing the vestis cenatoria or vestis, which were lavish and sumptuous clothing worn after the hot baths. So, as we said, in ancient Rome, most meals would be partaken standing, but as time passes, we have the invention of the triclinium, which was an either overly shaped or rectangular table. And around this triclinium, we have the lecti tricliniaris, which were basically those beds where Romans would lay down and eat, typical of iconography, if you will. Now, when you see a image of triclinium and lecti tricliniaris with also women, then we are t you can immediately spot that we're talking about imperial times, because it was in imperial times that women would lay down as well, and you would have these very long uh, cene with uh, music and uh, dances and singing. Initially, the cena or koina would be consumed in the atrium, so we're talking about kind of a lobby outside the house, but as houses became bigger, we start seeing the development and building of several dining halls. The typical number of commensals was nine, and multiple of nines until 36. Young children would be sitting on stools rather than bed, actual beds, whereas slaves would be sitting on the floor. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember, thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye.